your questions for our experts. So we pulled Jason Lee away from his makeover because we would like you to help us out. Okay, so thank you. Uh, this is from Janelle. She tweeted, I have short hair. I want to grow it out. We hear this from a lot of women. Do you have any advice on how to do it? I mean, this is really one of those questions that people ask all the time, and I think it's more because people are always scared to cut their hair from long to short yes. for this reason, because there is a process when you grow at your hair, and the process is, if you have really, really short hair, you have layers, um, you really want to grow the top part out longer first, almost you want to get to like a bob length, like kind of what I have, mm -hmm. um, and so how you do that is you go into the salon and you have your hairdresser just constantly cutting out the back, so you'll be doing that until this part here grows out. Uh... Once you get to the bob length, then you have the weight for it to go past the shoulder, so you're going to say to your hairdresser, I'm not going to see you for eight to ten months. Yes. You're not going to touch your hair. Yes. You can message them on Instagram. You can say hi that way. <laughs> but you're going to stay WhatsApp. away. Yeah. yeah. You're going to stay away. And then once you get past the shoulder, you're going to then st go back in and start cutting some soft layers throughout the hair. And that's going to create a longer line. And that's how you grow out your hair. Okay, now are you, so you're not getting trims in those eight to 10 months? Depending on your hair type, if you have yeah. hair that's really fragile that does break off, you can do, you go in for what we call a dusting, which is a very, very mm. subtle, barely kind of a haircut, just to keep the ends re really strong. Okay. Um, but if you have stronger hair, medium length hair, or medium you know, strength hair, then you can just grow it out. Okay, keep it dusty. Keep it dusting, <laughs> like don't chomp it off. Don't, just don't a dusting. Get, yeah, exactly. Sam on Facebook says, my hair color always tends to go brassy. Do you have any tips on how to handle that? That's a that's a big one as well. Yeah, people really have a hard time with brassiness, and yeah. I understand Can it. you describe what, what does she mean by brassy? Exactly. For people who don't get it. 100%. So brassy means, for blondes, it means that their hair tends to pull this kind of yellowy tinge. Yeah. And for brunettes, it means that their hair kind of goes reddy orangey. And if you're, if you're a brunette or a blonde that understands brassiness, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So with blondes, there's usually two reasons. One, either the either the, the colorist has not brought your hair blonde enough so it sits underneath the yellow tone. And that you want to use a purple shampoo with. And purple, for some reason, neutralizes the blonde and it just makes it look like a really pretty blonde. Yeah. Other people who have really light hair and their hair is really porous, the water residue, um, just over time between your colors, it'll make the hair kind of yellowy. And then you want to use like a clarifying shampoo to just help remove some of that. Okay. And for brunettes, uh, that goes orangey, you ultimately want to use, they have these great mousses out now that are kind of like a bluey greeny tinge, which kind of sounds scary, but mm -hmm. it neutralizes that orangey red tone, and that's how you get more of a natural brown. That's what all those colored products are for, exactly. right? Exactly, 100%. To balance it all. Vanessa says, I have curly hair and it always looks like a triangle because I'm scared to cut layers in. Um, I've had curly hair before, and right. it does go in a triangle if you don't tame it or train it properly. So what do you need to do to get rid of triangle head? Right, I mean, it's every curly haired person understands this kind of triangle because the concept is I'm gonna grow my hair to weigh down the curl so I can control it. Right. But we're kind of at a time now where it's okay to embrace a curl and yes. a little bit more movement is great. You don't want your hairstylist to cut straight lines, like a straight haircut. Right. So how they would approach my hair or somebody with straighter hair, that's not how you want to approach curly hair. I think of it like sculpting. So you mm -hmm. kind of go into it, you kind of cut random pieces and eventually you create more movement. You take a that triangle yes and that's how you get more movement and a little bit more body on the hair are you looking for more of a circle than a triangle I mean <laughs> we're going for more <laughs> of a shape like, you know <laughs> yeah just more of a shape happening yes. so you need some you need some layers cut in there yes uh, Tamara says I'm now at the stage where I have a, a lot of gray hair especially around my face I'm at the salon all the time, every two to three weeks, touching up my roots. It is time consuming. It is expensive. What can I do? The trick here is that you absolutely want to lighten up at least around your face because usually, generally speaking, most people get gray around their face first. Yeah. So if you're darker haired, you want to do some highlights or even just go in with a lighter color around your hairline and that'll help grow out that process a little bit more and eventually you may have to go a little bit lighter just to kind of extend that period. Right. There are so many products now that are just like little, uh, like... Touch-ups. Yeah, touch-up yep. sticks and yep. sprays there's and... There's powders, there's sprays. Those are yeah. all great as well to get you through, especially if you have a you know, business meeting or somewhere to go. Totally. You don't want to show off so much of that gray, but yeah. a, a long-term uh, solution is to eventually start going a little bit lighter. Okay, thank you, Jason, for your expertise.